It's the Cocktail 615, baby. Yeah, yeah, it's the Cocktail 615. And what I'm doing right now is about to introduce y'all to my relationship series, okay? Um, well, let me tell you how this works. Uh, I put out a, a Facebook post of, of about an idea that I had, and I had a couple of people um, reach out and said that they would love to help me out through this exercise. And what I did was I asked them to give me three questions that they would ask on a So You Want to Date Me application and tell me a deplorable or a moment that changed you into where you are in, in relationships now. So I got single people, married people, people that are taken, people that don't know, people that are celibate. You know, I got the, the spectrum out here. So I hope you all enjoy it. Just stay tuned. Um, I probably got mm, close to 10, 12 people who, who participated. So there's no telling how it's going to come out, but uh, I hope you all enjoy it. All right. Uh, <laughs> what is your age? 38. What is your race? Black. Okay. What is your relationship status today? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I am in a relationship, but it's kind of complicated. Okay. And what is your sexual orientation? Uh, I'm a freak in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Um, I'm homosexual. Okay. Um, are you currently sexually active? I am. Okay. When it becomes me. Okay. Yeah. How many exclusive adult relationships have you had? And we can say from the age of when you considered yourself to be an adult. Mm. Now, we're going to go back to this. <laughs> so I need you to be very precise in your answer. Mm. I'm going to say you three. Three. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. See, I wrote it down. So, in front of you, you have a pen and a pad. Okay. So, if any time you want to make notes to yourself on things that we touch on mm -hmm. that maybe you skipped over and you want to come back and revisit, that's what that's there for, okay? okay. Gotcha. And, and we'll keep on with the questions. Okay. Have you ever been married? No. Engaged? <laughs> Partially. Jesus. <laughs> Do you have any children? Biologically, no. No. But you have some people, some children that you have adopted. Yeah. Okay. All right. And so, if you remember, there were three questions that you would, you know, put on a, um, if somebody wanted to date you application, right? Mm -hmm. Those were three, three questions that you sent me. But do you remember the moment that you wish you could change? Um, because I think that was the question that I asked you. So it, in your relationship status, how you are now, like, is there any moment that you wish that you could have changed to to have a different outcome? Most definitely. Okay. Um, it started at the age of, I would say, 19. 19. Um, you fall in love with someone. You think this is the person is it. Um, you do everything possible that you think you can do when truly you were young and dumb, basically. Yeah, you didn't know anything in 19. You I thought you know. did. Uh, right. And I wish I could change things, but I'm thankful for going through it. Though. Oh, yeah. So yeah, 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 yeah. It works out. Okay. All right. So what we going to do, man, uh, we have this, uh, I got a michael jordan shoe box full of all of these questions and what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna pull them out at random okay. um and the questions that i ask are for the people who have participated at this point so it's not like i you know sit in my little uh, lazy boy and wrote on these little note cards my thoughts these are everybody's thoughts who participated so you know it, it might be something that you put in there but it might not be and it might be kind of lame too because some of these questions are <laughs> slick lame all right so you ready I'm ready. All right, all right, cool. We'll be back. On a scale of one to ten, ten being the high, how would you rate your physical appearance? I'm gonna say six. Six. Talk about a time when you lost control, acted out of your character in a relationship. Mm. Mm. I'll give you some time. What you drinking on over there? Uh, you... I think this is some vodka, tequila, and some uh. Mango. Some mango. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I definitely remember the time I acted out. Um, it's because I caught them cheating. Oh. So, so how did you catch them? Well, it wasn't hard. 
Okay. So I went to work. They called me. It was like, hey, I need you to stop by and bring me some something from the store. I can't remember what it was. And I was like, cool. They said, give me 30 minutes and then come on by. I said, okay, cool. So I get the product. Well, I wait 30 minutes. I get right. the product. Right. And I take it to me. The lights are off. Why is the lights off? So I noticed a vehicle mm. outside of the apartment complex. Right. And I'm like, hmm. So that's unusual? Yeah, because this person knows that I don't like this person. And, okay, all right, all right, all right. I see where this is going. And they had an interest in the person that I like. So I was like, hmm, they're not answering the phone and the lights are off. And so you can just see the TV flickering. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when I knocked on the door, they opened the door. And you can just smell it. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Okay, 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 okay. So how did you get out of, is is that not in your character to, you know, go be inspect the gadget and find out what's going on? Or how did that become where you acted out of character? Um, Because usually me now would say, okay, and walk off. Right. Then I was still that type of person, but the problem was is that they lied. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. And so I turned around like I was walking away. <laughs> so when they thought I was just walking away, like giving them their product and walking away, I actually busted down the door. Jesus. And I was on my way to, like, drag them out of the apartment. <laughs> on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the high, how would you rate the importance of religious beliefs in relationships? I would say seven. A seven? Yeah. A seven. Yeah. Okay. Because I know that different people have different religions. Right. Now, if it becomes satanic, satanic, or yeah. like, whichever way it's, it's right. now, um, then that's when we have a problem. <laughs> what responsibilities do you take on when dating someone? Mm. Mm. That's a good question. Um, usually, when I'm in a relationship, I usually take on the role of getting to know, like, know the little bits of that person um, or studying them to see what they like and what they dislike. Not always asking, but just watching their man- mannerisms. Okay. So I know what they kind of like, what they dislike. Um, I am the... Um, hmm. I'm usually the um Are you, the, come on man. Be honest with me. Be honest with me. I, I want you to be comfortable and be honest. Right. So when 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 as a heterosexual male, mm-hmm. right, the responsibility that I take on when I'm dating someone is to be attentive. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm I'm hearing from you, is mm-hmm. to be attentive and to be um a a a force that is a protecting kind of force, mm-hmm, right? That's right. what women like. Right. You, they want you to be assertive. They want you to be attentive, and they want you to be that protector, that provider. And so you mm-hmm. have to take on responsibilities that revolve around those concepts. Right. So in, in, in your relationship space, like what responsibilities? So if I see two, and, 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 and I don't mean to cut, you know, you gonna think it's funny, but if I see two men in the car. Mm-hmm, right? right, and I know that. Hey, mo- both of them might be homosexual. Which one of y'all pumping the fucking gas? Right, you right. know what I'm saying. So that's what I'm talking about, or that's what I think they mean. When what kind of responsibilities do you take on? So it's like, um, I have, most of the time I take on the female part okay. of the role. Okay, so, okay, okay. But I'm, but I'm versatile. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Whatever. It, needs to happen will happen mm-hmm. so in that moment if they need me to be more masculine i will be more masculine if i need to be more soft then i'll be more soft okay okay so when, when you meet someone is that something that you know off the rip that you're gonna have to be not a always, or b not no. always okay. because sometimes they would fool you mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay give me an example about what you mean <laughs> So, okay. um, 
I wasn't really dating this person, but we just had a fling. Okay. And I thought they were the masculine guy, so I was going to be the, the female in the role. All right, right. But tables turned. They they were really wanting to be the female in the role, and I had to be the male in the role. And I was yeah. like, wait a minute. But you're like hardcore, like yeah. tatted up. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, possibly gang member. <laughs> but you want to be the the but, female in the role? So, and so does, is that a comfortable space for you, though? Like, to, to switch it, or is that a turn off? It depends on the person. It depends. It depends on if I really care for them or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was yeah, just, yeah, yeah. I think that was a two, two time fling, and that was it. Yeah. What is the perfect date? And what is the best date you have been on? Um, a perfect date for mm-hmm. me would be um, just relaxing, going to a restaurant, eating mm-hmm. good food, uh, possibly going to a movie afterwards, or just chilling in a park with the sunroof back. Just a nice day. Yeah. I mean, other activities can happen, but... Right, 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 right. I feel you. I feel you. That's nothing, a good day. Nothing major. Right. Okay. Yeah. So what is the best day? in your recent memory that you've been on? When somebody was like, I'm going to take you out. Well, I guess the, the person I'm speaking with now. Okay. Um, previous relationship, it was me, like, 90, and they were 10. And this relationship is 50-50. Mm-hmm. So we always make sure we do our part. Yeah. Um, when it's their turn, they do their part. And when it's my time, I do my part. Okay. So. Okay, so what did y'all do? Well, I mean, th- th- this perfect date, what was that? The perfect date was that we went bowling. Oh. Uh, we had a good a good evening. Okay. Um, afterwards, we went to eat. Um, we enjoyed each other's company. Um, so how y'all do bowling with COVID? You got your own ball? Or yes. y'all? Well, we didn't have our own ball. Oh, Jesus. I, wi- I wiped my ball down. <laughs> <laughs> On a scale of ten, uh, 1 to 10, 10 being the high, how would you rank the importance of sexual chemistry in relationships? Nine. Nine. Yeah. Nine. I have to have that because with Tauruses, we're very um, intimate. Mm. Um, we are very, very intimate. So, so, so do you believe that's true of all Tauruses? Because you're speaking in general terms. Mm-hmm. Like... Uh, you, you do. You believe in the stars and the how the, be- the moon and the sun and the <laughs> seasons. You believe in that shit. I believe in some of it, but with every tourist that I have came across, mm-hmm. no matter what, that is one of the most important things that we have all in common. Yeah. Is yeah. to have that sexual... Right, chemistry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever had an argument over social media use in past or current relationships, meaning, um, why that? Why that man looking like your pictures? Why? Why you like? Why oh, you texting them? Gotcha, why? Gotcha. Why they in your inbox? <clears throat> Have you ever had those arguments? Uh, <clears throat> not really, because when I was really into the first person I was in a, an exclusive relationship with, yeah. social media wasn't that big. It was like <laughs> MySpace, black. <laughs> <laughs> you dating yourself like a motherfucker. Right. Yeah. So it re- really wasn't that. I, it was more of I can see the chemistry between them talking. Mm. And I knew something was going on. And yeah. they think I was stupid. Yeah, yeah. So not over social media, no. What is your biggest sexual turnoff? Hmm. Mm. I guess if it can't get up, I mean, I'm not going to waste my time. That's just too much going on. It, that really takes too much time. Like, What is your definition of amazing sex? <laughs> I've only had, well, that's been a couple of times. Amazing sex to me <laughs> right. would be <clears throat> one it, I, you know what? Really, truly, I don't have to come every time. Okay. Um, I really mm-hmm. want to make sure that the other person comes really before myself, because if I come before another person, I'm I'm out of it. Yeah. Like, I'm done. Like yeah. The tension is over. Right. Um. Right. Like I, I I have to make sure the other person is has gotten edge first. But mm-hmm. um. But I have 
had an orgasm without being touched. And that was the most amazing time. What are your feelings on side pieces? Have you ever had a side piece? Have you ever been a side piece? Let me drink on that. On both ends, yeah. Sometimes it's needed. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But, I mean, okay, is that something that you could be cool with at the onset of something? Like, if somebody came to you, it's like, you know, I like you. You are um, somebody special to me, but, you know, I'm going to do my thing elsewhere. And I want you to be cool with that. And you can even meet him or her. You know what I'm saying? Would you be cool with that? Is that something that you could get vibe with? Because if you have been a sad piece, that has been cool. Right. And you know what was really crazy? That has happened. Like I... <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> because they wanted to meet me so bad. And I was like, I thought it was awkward. Yeah. Because you don't want to be in that same space with that other person because you all have a connection. But now this other person knows and wants to wants to know about yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. What are your thoughts on polyamorous relationships? Mm, see how that shit flow mm. up? Mm. Um, it's, I would say in... <clears throat> In the LGBTQ plus <laughs> community, is right. it's it happens more because most of the time they can't. I don't know why they can't be. There are some that are monogamous, but most of the time it's 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 that way. Oh really? And I don't know why they don't like to be monogamous. Like for mm. me, my first relationship. I thought was monogamous until you I found out it, yeah. it, it was not monogamous. Right, because I'm like, this is the person that I love, I want to be with, blah, blah, blah. I was thinking about marriage. And yeah, then when that yeah. happens, so then it changes your mind, and that's probably why it happens that way, because yeah. their mind changes like, yeah, yeah. oh, they're doing this, well, I need to do this. But yeah. it happens in heterosexual relationships as well. What is the most romantic thing you have done for someone? I'm just trying to think. Well, yeah. I can just oh. think of uh, one Valentine's Day um, that I was speaking, talking to someone, and, um, you know, I got them, you know, I, I kind of asked them what their likes were because they were kind of a particular person. Sure. So I got everything that they wanted and they were shocked. Um, I think like flowers, candy, you know, yeah, like the yeah, balloons. Yeah, 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 yeah. Took them to J. Alexander's Man, um, come West on. End. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I fucked with that. But I was also given the same thing as well, which okay. I was shocked. So okay. Yeah, yeah. I think that's about the most romantic thing. Do you know your love language? Words of affirmation. Mm. Um, gifts. I can't remember all of them right now. My love language. My friends say I'm very materi materialistic, but yeah, <laughs> I'm only materialistic because I pay for it. Yeah. Um, that doesn't mean that that's my love language. Right. Um, my love language would be conversation. Mm. Yeah, um, I yeah. have to have a good conversation with that person. Right. If not, it ain't gonna work. It ain't gonna work. Okay. <laughs> Have you ever been cheated on, forgave the offense, and stayed in the relationship? We just co Ooh, we covered that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know. That's definitely a yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> but why did you stay, though? Because I was digmatized. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes the sex keeps you there, and it's, it's so funny that I look back, and I was like, why did I stay? stay. Yeah. And I was like... It was good conversations. Yeah. We needed, but the yeah. sex was amazing. Yeah. And yeah. I thought I thought I couldn't find anyone that would do the things that they did. Mm, and Jesus. I didn't want to have to start all over either. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And, and we've all fell into that web. Yeah. Uh, that oh. trap. Like, oh man, she do it. Yeah. She's crazy than a motherfucker. <laughs> Here we <laughs> What's up? It's your boy Trey. Thanks for tuning in to the Cocktail 615.